Good morning friends, this video is in partnership with Faux Memo who has kindly sent over a sample of their product for me to try out. I will be doing some packaging prep today and I will show you how I use Faux Memo's MO2S printer to create labels for my orders. So our new friend here is called the MO2S Pocket Thermal Printer that comes in a very cute envelope looking style design. It's light and portable and the good thing is it doesn't require any ink for printing. I've actually never used a thermal printer before and I was honestly impressed by how well this little guy worked. I think this printer is pretty versatile. You can use it to make bullet journal stickers, to-do lists, you can print pictures, or just use it for decoration. But because it uses heat to print, it can only print in black, blue, or navy blue colors. In addition to the printer, Faux Memo also sent me four rolls of white sticker paper to try out, and these ones will print in black color. To print, I downloaded the Foam Memo app from my iPad, and surprisingly, it comes with all kinds of templates ready for use. Like there are text templates, to-do lists, frames, and here I'm just printing the cat template because, you know, I love cats. There is also an option on the app to print from your photos, so I was really interested in drawing a new design of my own. And since Halloween is coming up and most of my stickers are Halloween themed, I wanted to draw some cute packaging labels that say please don't bend and have like a ghost or a cute little pumpkin beside it.
Hi everyone! So earlier this week, I restocked my Moquette and Kai Cat stickers. I restocked around 15 sets and as of today, they're already sold out again. Um, my best friend even bought two sets from my shop, so that made me really, really happy. Um, a lot of people asked me where I got my backing cards and I just want to show you. So I used the monoline brush to draw this out on Procreate and I just print them out with my printer on semi-cardstock matte paper and this is what they look like. So today I'm going to pack the these stickers into their sleeves and I'm just gonna pack some orders that I prepared yesterday with my full memo stickers. So lately, I've been getting into the habit of doing some packaging prep a few days before I actually start packaging my orders. So the first thing I do is to correctly address my envelopes. I write down the customer's name and address in the middle and I put these please do not bend stickers. And I also include my return address up top just so that I don't have to write them out again. Usually I also stamp my logo down here but this time I haven't done it yet because this week has been a little bit hectic. And the last thing I do is I print out these thank you cards and write down the first name of the person who placed the order. Then I put it into the envelope making sure that the name on the thank you card matches the name on the envelope so that I won't make any mistakes. I started doing this because when I first started running my shop, I would pack every individual order from start to finish all in one turn. And I realized that it's really tiring to do that. Like to have to like write down the address, write down the thank you cards, do everything all at once. It gets a little tedious. But once I started doing the prep work, I learned that packaging can be like a really fun experience for me and it helps me avoid avoid any mistakes. I also want to share with you some mistakes I've made since opening my shop and also like what I've learned from those mistakes. So the first mistake I made was swapping two orders by accident. So let's say we have person A and person B and they each ordered a different set of stickers. I accidentally sent person B's order to person A and person A's order to person B. Luckily, the swap only happened between two orders and it wasn't like a whole Shane domino reaction because that would have been a headache to solve. But um, sorry, I hit my camera. So what I learned from that is to double check the name on the order and the name on the envelope and to make sure that it matches. So now I double check every single order and by having the thank you card with the name written inside of the envelope, Wait, where did Tori go? Oh, Tori's here. Um, having the thank you card inside of the envelope, it also helps me keep track of whose order belongs to who. So when I get a new order, it comes into the unshipped option of my big cartel. And when I'm packing orders, I don't necessarily want to have my phone open the entire time and just, you know, scroll through each order at a time. So what I used to do was I would open up my bullet journal and write down each order individually and their address just to double check and also their orders. And the second mistake I made was to not double check with the original order on the big cartel app before sealing the envelope. So I accidentally wrote down that this person wanted to order one of a particular sticker set when they actually wanted three. And because I didn't double check with the original order, I accidentally sent them 
two less of what they ordered and again I'm really grateful for how kind they were in just simply messaging me and letting me know and today I'm going to pack them the missing stickers and mail them out by Monday so what I learned from this is to always go back to the original orders and double check triple check and make sure that everything is correct as the person wanted it my third mistake was an unfortunate thing that happened to this particular sticker set so I first printed out the much friend sticker sheet during nighttime and when I loaded the paper onto my printer I didn't notice that it was backwards so I ended up printing my design on the back part of my sticker paper which means that when you peel the stickers out it's not the stickers that are sticky it's the back of the sticker sheet that's sticky so I printed out around 20 of these mush friend stickers and all of them were printed on the wrong side I packed around three to four orders and by the fifth order I realized that the paper on this side looked more yellow on the one on this side and I was like that's a little weird so I tried peeling the stickers and that's when I found out that I had printed it on the wrong side so with mistake number three I had to go back and reopen the envelopes that I sealed which had the mush friend sticker sheet in them and I printed out the new version and had to repack everything all over again so the lesson I learned here is to recheck your paper before you load it into the printer. So I just wanted to share these stories about the mistakes that I've made because I tend to be really really hard on myself and I know a lot of artists or content creators out there who could probably empathize with how I feel. When I first made these mistakes, I felt so guilty and I was very upset with myself and that's because I didn't realize that the expectations that I so unfairly set for myself were just ridiculously high. I was expecting myself to do something that I have never done before perfectly and that's just way too much of a burden for me to put on myself. I have never run a sticker shop before in my life. This is like the first time that I'm actually doing something all on my own without like a boss or a supervisor to look over me and make sure that I don't make the mistakes that I made. So it's perfectly normal to learn from your mistakes and to make sure that next time I don't do the same things again. Like next time I'm gonna double check my sticker paper and not load it on the wrong side in my printer so I don't waste paper and you know, yeah. Just wanted to share. asked me about how to get a clean die cut on their stickers because they were having trouble with um, the pressure of the needle on the Cricut machine so today I thought I'd show you the number of setting that I have in case that might help you out a little bit so basically you go into um, your profile and you click on manage custom settings and your Cricut machine is gonna show up you're gonna click on it 
So here I have my material settings opened and for my die cut stickers, I don't use any of the dial presets. I scroll all the way down to custom materials. So here, the setting that I use is called printable sticker paper clear. You may have noticed that I don't print on clear paper and I actually print on white paper. But for some reason, I experimented with the second option and the calibration on it is slightly off which means that my stickers don't get cut around the outline that I intended them to be cut so the one that works best for me is printable sticker paper clear so we're gonna tap on that and over here you can see the fine point blade which is the blade that comes with the machine so the number of my cut pressure is set to 244 which after a lot of experimenting is like the perfect clean cut for a die cut sticker for me if I remember correctly the machine came with a setting of 240 and I started by increasing one or two at a time just to test things out. I remember using 243 and having like scraps of paper still sticking to the part of the sticker that I wanted to cut out so I just increased it by one more to 244 and since then all my die cuts have been super clean. Mm -hmm. 